Hey there, Dustin Schmidt here again today, and today we're going to talk about how to light a living room scene. So let's shoot a quick little sequence here. Um, let's set the scene. We've got our talent, who in this case is going to be me because I'm shooting all this in my spare time here, is going to come in, grab a seat, pull something up on the phone, and uh, maybe interact with an app, which is another thing you might do on your couch at home. Um, and let's just shoot a quick little three-shot sequence of that and see how it comes out. I think the first question is probably why a living room, right? The reason why a living room is because if you shoot any number of commercials for probably any product, any client, uh, at any time, there is probably going to be a living room in it at some point. Whether you're shooting something for uh, mobile or a TV commercial or it's for food or something like that, you know, someone's on their couch watching TV, someone's on their couch on their phone. Somebody is on their couch for movie night or they're sitting around with the family eating some food. You know, there's a lot of different things that take place in a living room. And when I've been creative director in the past and shot a bunch of commercials, I would say probably, you know, a majority of them have some sort of scene in a living room. So to show you some of what that could look like, I've set up my living room in a similar setup as we might do if we we're going to bring in talent and do something. So, all right, let's talk about our setup here and kind of what we're doing camera and lighting wise. Camera wise, I've got the Canon C200. We're shooting Canon RAW here. And lens, I've just got the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8. Um, I've got a lot of other GAC on this camera right now. But because I don't have some of the things I'd need to really run this as a production, like an AC, um, somebody to actually run the dolly here, um, I'm mostly just using the dolly for quick framing. Um, ideally, what I would do is do a little push with this, but I can't act and do a little push. So we probably won't see that. We might do that digitally in post. Um, I don't have the fall focus engaged right now because I'm just using the auto face tracking on the Canon C200, which is great. Um, so we're going to let that do some of the hard work for us as a, a solo operator right now. I've got Mike Boone in here for audio. That's what I was speaking to. Now, there's probably a million ways to light a living room, right? Or any room. You know, living room, bedroom, you know, something that has, it's essentially a large rectangular or square space, right? It's usually going to have windows, and ideally what you want to do is you want to find something that has depth to it. Uh, there's a lot of ways to communicate depth. Uh, one of the key things that you really should do is try to shoot into the L of the room or the corner of the room. Now, in this case, I'm actually not doing that, and I'll tell you why. Because one, I don't have as much depth if I shoot into the corner of this room. I actually have another room that goes further back here. And so what I'm trying to do is communicate some of that depth by lighting that room back there and opening that door so that you get to see things recede a little bit more. If I were to try to shoot into the corner of this room, it would actually feel a lot smaller because the room's just not that big. Um, but ideally, when you can, you want to shoot into a corner of a room because that's going to give you some interesting angles. Um, and if you're not going to do that like me, try to communicate that depth in some other ways. Let's walk on back here. We got a lot of haze in here. All the haze is coming from the back room. Here's the one bulb that's on in this practical right here. And it's gelled up. You can actually see a little bit some of the light rays coming in here. Unfortunately, they don't extend all the way over to the, the shot you're seeing on camera. Uh, but outside this window here, we've got the 600X with the Fresnel just coming through. And that's just warmed up and has the temperature and the output tuned up to the right level where we can see it. So 
The other thing that I've done here is I've tried to key from the same direction as the windows. And so what you want to do now that we've, we've done our wide shot, we've established what the space looks like. Now I have some room to kind of tweak that a little bit uh, to bring in light that is a little bit softer or looks a little bit better or to potentially uh, light from the window that you don't see. So in this case, I have a couple windows back this way. I've exposed for those windows and the outdoors to kind of hold those to make sure they're not blowing out. And now what I'm doing is, you know, faking that there's another window over here somewhere that could be lighting me, or in the sense that you're shooting, you know, perhaps at night or something like that, you could fake that light from a practical that's in the scene. So there was a practical over here to my side, it was just a lamp. And so you could kind of warm your key light to that color and pretend that you're getting some of that light from the lamp as well. Here's our key light. Like I said, Hive Hornet 200C, just bounced into a four by ultra bounce here, um, all on the same stand and warmed up. Just providing a little bit of a highlight here on that side of the face. I've got two practicals in here. You only see this lamp a little bit at the beginning of the move. And then in the back, we've got our LIFX bulb doing some work back there. I like the 200C because it's a full RGB color tunable light. So I can essentially set the white balance or the white point of the light anywhere from super warm to super cool. And in this case, I've got it warmed up to kind of play off of the practical that I've got here on the side. So over to this side, I've got a four by four floppy. Uh, I've got a six by ultra bounce using the black side there. And I've just got that pulled in as close as I can on the frame to kind of give some shape over here. The other side of this room is similar walled color to what you see back here and over here. And so it's kind of a, a light gray. And what I want to do is kind of spill, kill some of the spill that might be occurring from our key light or some of our light coming in here and just provide some, some contrast on this edge. Here's our neg over on the side. So you can see how the wall here is kind of a light gray. And what we've done is move that neg in as close as we can to provide some contrast on this side here. Now, if we go back to the wide shot here, and I'm actually gonna do this in real time, so I'm just gonna hop up. I've got the camera on a dolly right now. We're gonna push back and hopefully our face tracking actually works here. And voila, we're a little bit wider here. And now you can see a little bit more of the frame. This is kind of the frame that we almost started with. Um, and you can see a little bit more of what's going on. I've got a practical back here in the corner and that's got a uh, LIFX light. It's just something you can buy from uh, Best Buy. And so it's color tunable, but it's more of a consumer brand product, not like an aperture light or something like that. Um, that you could all do on one app, but it does have an app that allows you to tune it. So I've dialed down the exposure and the color temp to where I want it. Um, here in the back, the deep back, we have the Aperture 600X that's outside of that window and lighting up that room. We've also got some haze back there to hopefully kind of get, you know, a better sense of that light. I didn't really get the rays that I kind of wanted back there. Um, but it's still doing something back there and really providing some depth. And then mid-ground, I've got just a practical that's already here in the house, just the overhead lighting fixture. Um, it's a three bulb fixture. And what I've actually done is I've unscrewed two of the bulbs and just left one of them on because it was a little bit too bright and distracting from the wide shot of the scene. And then on that bulb, I've actually put some gel on it. And so I'll, I've got a little clip of that. I've got a light right here that's kind of mid background and I had it off, but I decided I wanted to turn it on to add a little more depth back here. But the problem is these are just regular light bulbs and they're, they're way too bright uh, for what I need for the frame. I really need to dim them down. And of course they make lights that you can dim down, uh, but those are expensive and I only have one of them and I already have it in a practical lamp. So, all I've got here is just a little pack of Lee filters. And this is just a cheap kind of 
you know, various filter pack. It's not very big. It's probably about an eight and a half by 11, a little bit bigger, um, but it has a full selection of gels in here. And what I want to do is warm this one up because it's about 3000 Kelvin. And my practicals that I have dialed in that are fancier and have an app, I have it about 2K. So I want to warm this one up a little bit more. So all I'm going to do is cut and put a full CTO gel and just wrap it around a light bulb here. And what that should be able to do is allow me to warm this bulb up for really cheap instead of going out and spending another $65, $80 on you know, a fancy bulb that you can control with an app, which would be easier. Um, I happen to have these on hand, so we're gonna try this and see how it looks. So here's that bulb with the full CTO on it, and you can see that it's a lot, lot warmer. And now if we go back to camera and check that out, hopefully what you'll see is that our frame, we've got a lot warmer light back here, matching our warmer light in the foreground. Hey guys, forgot to record an outro, so real quickly here on a different day. Uh, what'd you think of the setup? What'd you think of the spot? Uh, how would you light a living room, you know, differently than this? Um, leave your comments down below. Let me know any questions. And uh, once again, thanks for watching. See you next time.